you're new here, my name is Mo. Uh, if you're just joining me, thank you for joining and uh, welcome back if you are a returning uh, visitor. And I'm coming to you from Israel, from uh, Ramat Gan, where we live, me and my husband, and with our three kids um, in our little rooftop apartment. And uh, this is my home studio. And yeah, you're welcome here. This is a crochet and knitting studio where I held weekly meetings, um, weekly classes where I teach uh, three classes a week, every Monday morning, every Tuesday morning, and on Tuesday, a midnight class. And yeah, today's Wednesday morning, and I'm like uh, after two lessons this week, actually. Uh, this week we didn't have the, the Monday morning class. We had, we had a meeting that I wanted to join Eyal, my husband, so I canceled Monday morning. Yes, today is Wednesday morning. Weather in Israel is already summer. The summer here is heavy summer. I'm not sure where are you from, but it's really hot here in the summer and humid. And this week we are starting to really to feel it so the air condition is on um, there's no other way uh, but it's okay and we all learn how to live with it on today's video i thought to share with you a few of my um, works and to show a few of my projects uh, which are in work still in work in progress uh, and I also have a, a little surprise of um, a crochet um, bunny pattern coming soon and I will share it with you as well. I don't have so many projects um, on the go at the moment. In general, I'm not a person who keep uh, tons amount of projects, uh, open projects. I'm like more tidy person if you're not new to here and if you are following my blog you already know I'm a very tidy person and well organized and I don't like to have a mess of many many things open because my head is full of mess anyhow so I have to keep my surrounding uh, very tidy very well organized let's get started and see the project you can go and grab yourself a little drink to join me and to see all the projects I'm going to share. So what shall we start with? Mm, okay, I'm thinking about this project. A few of my projects I keep in open boxes because it's more comfortable for me to grab the yarn and I'll show you this project in a minute and you will understand why it's not closed in a project bag and it's in a basket, an open basket. So many times I'm sitting in our living room and knitting or crochet and I want to keep the yarn very open and I want to see them like a color palette more or less. So in this case, I felt it's the right way to keep my, to keep my wool and the colors. So this is a stripes um, sock that I have started uh, last weekend. And I'm just trying to, um, I'm, I'm trying a three by one rib sock and I'll show it to you closely. It's a three by one rib um, sock. And what I wanted to do is to try and use all kind of tiny little sock wool that I have in so many colors. And I have them sitting in a basket over there on the floor for a long, long time or maybe in a project, a small project bag that my mom uh, sold me before she uh, passed away. 
So I have all kind of little um, cotton project bags that she sold me full of these tiny little wool balls. And they are all uh, sock wool, uh, I guess super wash, 75% wool and 25% nylon. So um, what I did on Saturday morning, um, I cast on like, I think uh, 76 stitches on a short circular, uh, Chia Good short, short circular, circular needles uh, in a 2.25 millimeter uh, needle. And I just started to, to test um, like a very wide sock and a very loose uh, three by one uh, sock. And I play with all these colors I have in the basket and I just knit them, um, excuse me, and I just knit them uh, two rows of each color. And I'm not changing the color after two rows but i'm trying like in my kiss blanket i'm trying to um, continue working with one color with a few colors one or two or maybe more colors to uh to combine with so it's one color i started with and then a few colors are working with it and then the first color is leaving, very similar to the method, the, the stripes method in my um, kiss blanket. Most of the uh, yarn balls, tiny yarn balls here, are hand dyed. I can't really remember uh, where are they from. They are from all kinds of places, different places. Uh, and I also have uh, some yarn leftovers from Aweta which is a Weta Classic, which is um, this uh, olive green and this mustard color. And I also have a tiny ball left from, uh, it's like a brownish color from a Weta. I started to play around on Saturday and to see how it goes. I'm not sure what I think about the color combination, but I don't feel like uh, uh, now stop working on it. I will continue. And if I, if I feel it's not taking the right direction and the colors are not uh, playing and are not um, joyful enough in my, in my eyes, I will leave it aside. Uh, I'm not a kind of knitter that uh, if I started something I will anyway finish it if I feel in the middle of the work of the progress that I'm not happy with it I will put it aside or I will uh, tear it off or frog it I don't know how you say it um, so this is uh, the first project a three by one uh, rib um, sock let's see how it goes the other project I wanted to share is a headband and let me go and bring something from my printer that I printed for you. Um, yeah. um, and this is something one of my students uh, told me last Monday that she wanted to try and make and knit. It's a headband by Fiber Tales. This is the the pattern. It was not in the beginning of the lesson, it was kind of like almost the end of the lesson and she said I want to work on it and uh, can you help me and she took it out and I started to read the pattern and to look over to start and understand the details and I found it's a brioche pattern and this knitter, she never tried brioche before so I said okay if you want to make such a pattern and make such a um, project, you have to try brioche, maybe in a small swatch. And I think it was two years ago that I wrote 
uh, a brioche workshop and I had a few workshops one after the other only for brioche for knitters who never tried brioche before so I printed this um, workshop for her and I told her you know what take it home and it's written in Hebrew it will be easy for you to follow take it home with you and till next week try a little swatch of brioche in one color and the week after she came uh, sorry it's one of the Tuesday uh, one of my Tuesday uh, knitters yeah and uh, she came this Tuesday yesterday and she showed me she uh, already tried a swatch of brioche and she really really fell in love with it meanwhile on Saturday I uh, decided to give it a try uh, myself May maybe because I felt I need to uh, try before I teach her or but also because I really liked the pattern and personally when, when I'm at home um, I often use headbands uh, to take my head you know off my face or to clean my face or to make my um, uh, face routine so I thought why not to give it a go and to knit it myself and I just grabbed one of those yarns that I have here in the baskets for years and I it didn't have any label and I'm really not sure what it is but it's kind of a decay worsted wool I'm not sure if you can see the color but it's a dark gray but it's a warm gray so it's more like a dark warm not brown but really a dark warm gray this is the way to describe this color I hope you can see it and uh, I started to knit this headband and I, I have to say it's quite enjoyable I really like it I like the way it comes out and I really like the color and I think I will enjoy it when it's done um, yeah I knitted about 20 centimeters and now you have the pattern says you have to split uh, in order to make this overlap here so this is the stage I am at now this project is in one of those project bags from crochet objet I used to have in my Etsy shop back I think about mm, a year ago or maybe maybe even less but I have to remake them I think uh, and yes you know I have uh, something else here in the same fringe toffee fringe uh, project bag uh, I love them very much we all love them here um, I think it was during uh, COVID that I um, just discovered this little fox yarns and I ordered two skeins to uh, try and work with um, just wanted to show it to you because I think it has such a gorgeous touch and a gorgeous feel and if you're not new here you already know that I always look for a beautiful combinations of uh, wool and cotton of cotton and linen to knit with uh, so we can knit ourselves uh, knitwear that we can actually use so this I found it and it it's a 65 superwash merino with 20% wool and 50% yak and in general I recently found that yak is really really um, has a very nice touch uh, next to my skin and also my students said the same they said they feel it's a gorgeous fiber for us to knit with so just wanted to show it to you it's 
I think the company called Little Fox, um, it's written here, exquisite hand-dyed yarn, which is really exquisite. It feels very luxurious. And the name of the yarn is Bossa, and the color is natural. It's a 65 superwash merino, 20 silk, and 15 yak, and it's a DK weight. So this is something else I wanted to show you. And what's next? What will I show you next? Okay. Let's go to the next bag, which is, so I only have uh, this bag and then I'll show you the upcoming pattern, crochet bunny pattern that will be available soon. So in this bag I have, um, this is, Sorry, this is a buko bag, which I have for years, but probably you probably know about buko bag, if I pronounce her name correctly, Awana from Canada. I love everything she does, and um, I have this, I have this bag for years, I don't really remember when I purchased it, but yeah, and I use it a lot, and it still it's so looks so great, and it's so comfortable, and I love it. Um, okay, so in this bag, I have another gorgeous yarn. Uh, I showed it to you when I started to work. Uh, it's a crochet project, and which I try to develop using Mayak Mayak yarns which I'm so in love with. So let me show them to you one by one. First, the Tibetan cloud, which is 100% wool. It's also, I think it's also um, DK worsted yarn. Uh, I have it in this color. The name of the, this is Arte. Artemisia, Artemisia. This color is Boton d'Oro, d'Oro. And I think this, this is the natural color. Not sure, but I have the label. Wild Daisy, yeah. This is the Wild Daisy color. So this is the heavier, the heavier yarn. And I received two packages from Paula. Uh, recently and one of my students visited New York uh, I think she's back today and she also um, she visited Paula on the last day before sh they uh, closed their New York City studio she was there with her husband they said it was amazing it, they were they were so um, happy they made it to visit the Mayak studio in New York City and they also brought me a um, few yarns from there, which I'm very excited and very looking forward to get them. The second yarn I'm working with is 50% uh, baby yak and 50% organic cotton. What can I tell you about this yarn? This is a gorgeous yarn to work with. And for me personally, and for us in Israel, it's just a perfect solution to knit with wool, which is so, so lovely, feels so soft, and very gentle next to the skin. So I started to work with it, and I'll show in you in a minute, I'll show you what I did with it. Um, the next wool I have from Paula is the Mayak, uh, 50% baby yak and 50% silk. And I have it in, which is also so gorgeous to work with and has a really nice handle. I have colors, I have this color which is Amanda. And I'm not sure what the name of this color, but here I have color, color olive. So these three, let me sh see if I have it rolled here, yeah. 
So these three are the um, baby yak and silk, which are also so, so gorgeous to work with, feel so nice against the skin and feel like something we will really enjoy knitting and crochet with. And actually I'm trying to find my way into a crochet project and maybe uh, someday in the future, which I cannot tell when will it be, but if I just have a little more time in my pocket, yeah, I will, I'm trying to manage with what I have and I really enjoy working on this project. I don't really have a lot of time slots to work on it, but every time I sit to work on this project, I feel so happy and I have so many ideas and it's starting to look like a little problem because I really don't know uh, which direction to take and I'll show you all the little uh, swatches and uh, granny squares I made with those gorgeous yarns. So I started with these uh, like daisy flowers, uh, granny squares. And when I received the second package from Paula, I um had i just i changed something uh while working uh on the square after finishing the the flower and i decided to add these little popcorn stitches at the corner so they look a little bit like a continuation to this uh popcorn daisy flower in the center. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but let's get closer to the camera. I'm not sure if you can see it, but also the center here is a flower. So the center is made by the silk, yak and silk combination. And then the daisy, like a wild daisy flower is made with the Tibetan cloud in the color daisy. And then again, I use the mustard color is also uh, the silk, the silk and yak, and yak combination. And then I use the baby, the yak and organic cotton to frame everything and to finish up the square. So this is the second direction and then I have the third direction and I'm, I don't know what to do. I'm really so in love with this project. And if I just knew what I want to like to stick with and to work with, but I'm really not sure what direction to go in. Okay, so in this square, as I can see, it's gonna be very hard to show, but the center, it's just a simple solid square. The center is uh, made out of the baby silk and baby yak and silk. And then the second uh, round is made from the cloud, from the DK worsted. And there are thickness differences here, but that's what I really enjoy. I really love to, you know, try and work with a few different thicknesses with the same granny square and to see where it takes me. And then I framed it with the baby yak and organic cotton. But as you can see, I also here, I added these popcorn stitches, two of them in the corner. So I'm thinking where, where, I, where I have many of them made and they will get attached one to another, the little popcorns will meet in the corner and it can, you know, come up as a very, very nice motif which I think I'm going to really fall in love with. Now when I look at it through the camera, I really think they might work together. Wow, I think I have an idea. Anyway, 
This is this project, and if you have a minute to look inside this bag, which also my mom, my beloved mom, sold me, uh, sold for me, uh, if you can just go and see inside, there are so many Granny Squares options that I made out of these gorgeous yarns. And look at this, so simple, solid square. It made out of the um, silk, baby yak and silk, and the cloud, which is a decay. The baby yak and silk is fingering weight, and also the, the organic cotton and the baby yak is a fingering weight. And the cloud is a decay worsted, so look how special it looks. I'm really so in love with this simple, simple granny square. Okay, we will have to make some decisions here. Regarding the hooks, um, the hook sizes I've used, um, I have my, my little hook, um, I don't know, wallet or something. So I made a few different uh, trials here with my with my granny squares from my yak yarn. Uh, and I think I'm gonna stick to the three millimeter crochet hook, but still something I will have to uh, make up my mind about. But most of them are made with the three millimeter crochet hook, the fingering weight and the uh, DK as well. So working with few different thicknesses in the same granny square and in the same project, it's very interesting and I really, really enjoy it. Uh, but you have to be uh, very careful with the hook size and to see what hook gonna fit them together or if maybe there's an option that I will uh, write a few rounds with the fingering weight for three millimeter hook crochet hook and uh, and then the rounds with the DK worsted for um, bigger size hook. So this is it for the Mayak project in my book haul bag. And the final uh, project I wanted to share with you is a crochet bunny pattern uh, coming soon to my Etsy shop. I'll show it to you and I'll tell you everything about it. Yeah. So in this box, I have these cute little bunnies. And yeah, it's almost done. It's almost, uh, the pattern is almost ready to be published. It's written. It's almost, um, I almost finished with, write it on my computer, on uh, my um, pattern software. Just a few more details uh, to add and, um, and photos that I have to add and to edit. And then, and then three of my students are already uh, making it. They, three of my Tuesday students took the pattern with them to test it and then it's uh, free to go to uh, to the world, to the wild. It was, I think, a few weekends ago. Um, we didn't have any special plans. And uh, I just published a blog post like, um, like I do every Friday afternoon. And the blog post was out and I was like, okay, I finished my working week and I'm like getting into the weekend mood. And I don't know why I decided to go out of the studio and here is, here it's our um, bedroom, Eyal and myself bedroom. And then when you go straight there, it's uh, the main part of the, of our home, the kitchen, the living room. And I decided before I go out of the studio, I will take a little, I, I will take uh, one of my alpaca yarns and a silk mohair 
and the crochet hook and I'll start to play with it and I wasn't really sure what am I going to do but to tell you the truth I don't really know why I took the yarn and hook and what was in my mind but I was sitting in the living room and I started to crochet and I think it was like three hours later that I had a little creature in my hands and really, I'm not sure how to describe it, but it was a bunny that it just wanted to came. It just wanted to be done and to be created. So I start. Um, I used uh, one alpaca of, from my alpaca yarns. I will show it to you. It's over there. Yeah, right there. The brown and the, maybe I'll grab, you know, I have here. It's a DK worsted alpaca yarn, which I only sell locally. It's a local alpaca from the south of Israel. It's a local farm, alpaca farm. They are, they have, um, I'm not sure how many alpaca they have there, but this is a DK worsted, 100% um, undyed natural shades that I, keep in my studio. I don't have huge quantities of it, but I have them in black and dark brown and a toffee color and this ash color. And I used to have uh, like a beige color and I gave them very funny names. Uh, the black called Onyx and uh, there's an Hagrid, the, the brown, dark brown called Hagrid from Harry Potter. And yeah, we made many nice things from out of this uh, wool. And I worked, I took this alpaca and I worked with a uh, silk mohair from, which I had from knitting for olive. But anyway, they work pretty nicely together. And I took I think it was the 3.5 or a 4 millimeter crochet hook and I started to crochet this little creature and I started from a leg. I really started like my Angie Bunny. You see the Angie Bunny family? I started pretty much like I started the um, Angie Bunny uh, from one leg and then I cut the yarn and then I made the second leg and join the legs together into the body and really it was like three maximum three hours that I crocheted uh, holding together these two yarns the alpaca and the silk mohair and it just came out um, and then when I reached the eyes and all the details like ears and the tail I started to play and I I just wasn't really sure what am I going to do with the ears and how will it look like but I started to play and then when I realized it's starting to look like a real pattern that I can write down actually write down and send out to the world I immediately went back to my studio and grabbed my uh, pattern notebook and I uh, started to write down the pattern and so you will see a little bit in Hebrew a little bit in English and then when it was done I said and I had to like make decision about the eyes and about the details you know this is the really most difficult part in uh, animals in soft animals and I think not only in knitting and crochet also I heard uh, Dick Bruna says that um, you know Dick Bruna the Dutch artist created the Miffy Miffy the bunny and I heard him say that it can take him a week to decide where to put the line for the mouth and for the eye because this is where the, the whole personality is coming out. So I felt the same in this uh, 
project is where I also felt the same in my bunny, in my Angie bunny and with my beers patterns. But I decided this time not to use uh, accessories like uh, plastic safety eyes or something like that. And I just took one of my uh, black uh, cotton, four ply cotton yarn and I embroidered the eyes. I just make two X's for the eyes and one V, like a V uh, for the mouth. And without using any special uh, stitching technique, I just took a tapestry needle and I embroidered um, these details uh, and designed them as I go, like, like I did with the whole bunny. So, and then, okay, so I, I was, I came to the point where I understood it's a whole, really a whole pattern that I can write and publish. So I had to redo it and to sit and write the pattern. So that's how these creatures came out. And I started to write the pattern, you know, in appropriate way to really have a written pattern, uh, clear. And so that's why I have all four of them because I tried once again and again and again if the pattern works and I made an option with for the ears with holding two silk mohair strands or holding one silk and one alpaca. In another option I used Queens and Co. Um, yarn. I'm not sure I remember which yarn is it but I will uh, link everything in the pattern so you can use the same. In this case I used a Queens and Co. DK yarn, not sure what it's na what the name of it, but and I hold it together. Okay, this is the yarn. Here it is. This is a DK from Queens and Co. And this is a silk mohair from again from knitting uh, for olive. And yeah, I made a bunch of bunnies. And this time I made a bunny tail very different from the other bunnies I made or with the black, it will be very hard for you to see. But it's something very similar to the ear and I just sewed it offside, like not very straight and, not, and I made it not very round. It's a sort of another kind of ear that I made as a bunny tail. So yeah, and then I started to think, okay, if I'm going to publish this pattern, I have to find out uh, what is going to be the name of this creature. And it was the week when um, Albert Elbaz, the fashion designer from Paris, uh, passed away from COVID. And during this week, we had a lot of, uh, articles, news, uh, 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 internet articles, and in the TV articles about him. Um, Albert Elbaz was, uh, he graduated uh, Schenkel College, uh, I think nine or 10 years before me. And uh, he has a very, very special life story. He was a very uh, successful fashion designer who lived in Paris and worked for, for Landgren and for very high end uh, uh, studios and brands in the fashion industry. Uh, he is an Israeli guy. Uh, he was born in Morocco and he raised in a very simple uh, family here in Israel. And I felt somehow very close to him. And I felt like when he passed away from COVID, I felt very bad, like many of us in Israel. He was really a legend. He was really a 
very special story, life story, and a very special designer, very talented one. And the whole week and the whole weekend, I was reading articles about him, and he came to visit Israel. And every time he came to visit, he came to Shenkar College to to speak with the students and. I couldn't make it to any of his lectures. In the years after I graduated Shenkar, he came to Israel a few week, a few times and he mm, speak uh, to the students and tell his, to tell his story, designing process, designing uh, the whole idea of his um, life and journey as a designer in Paris in the high-end uh, market. Uh, I don't know, I think I was, my head was, you know, busy, very busy with his story, personal story, and his story was very touching, and I felt somehow uh, very close and related to, to this person. So I think, I think it's a sign that in this weekend I, this bunny came out of my hands uh, without any plans. And it was the same weekend that I was so busy in my head with uh, the story of Albert Elbaz. So I thought maybe <coughs> to call this cute little creature Albert, Albert the bunny. Let me know what you think. And if you think this uh, name uh, suits this, this little creature, and yeah, if we have a pattern almost ready and we have a name, this pattern will be published very soon. I will write about it in my blog, I, I hope, uh, and give more details. My alpaca yarn, the, the local alpaca farm that we have here in Israel, um, I'm, I'm getting not a lot of yarn out of this small farm, but um, I really have to think if, if I want to put it in my Etsy shop, I'm not sure yet if it's, uh, if how will I work it, but in any case, you can make this pattern using any DK yarn or, as a matter of fact, it's just a small soft toy. You can use any yarn you like. You don't have to use a silk mohair with a DK alpaca yarn, or you can use any yarn you like and to play with it uh, in order to create this little creature and to make someone happy in your life. So, yes, this is Bunny. I think it's Bunny Albert. I have a few more name ideas, but I think this is uh, in the top of my uh, names list. It's always very hard to give a name to a project. Um, I think it's the hardest part in the progress. Uh, so if you have any ideas, I will be, I'm very open to get your ideas. Leave me a comment down below here and let me know. So meanwhile, till, till this project is done, it lives in this wooden box and sits next to my computer so I can still uh, uh, measure and you know make a stitch count and measure the gauge and measure the height and everything. And I hope it will be soon available for you. Uh, I think I spoke quite a lot uh, today. I can feel it in my throat. Thank you so much for coming uh, here, for spending some time with me. Um, yeah, I'll see you on my next one. Bye.